a presentation in dynamic braking. Braking is a process of dispersing or dissipating energy. The brakes on a car slow the car by friction from the brake pads to the rotors. The rotors get hot and with the design of the rotors with their cooling fins sandwiched between the discs, it dis disperses the heat to the air. Uh, these can fail, however, due to wear of the pads and the rotors and because there are moving parts. Dynamic braking is the technique of electrically dissipating the rotational energy of an armature of a DC motor by use of a resistor and load contacts from a contactor. A motor can be stopped or slowed by turning the rotational energy into heat. Let's consider an example of a shunt motor. The rated voltage of the motor is 250 volts DC. The armature resistance is 1 ohm. And under full load conditions, the motor will demand 10 amps. When the starter contacts M close, current flows through the armature and the motor starts turning. Note. The flow of the current is from the negative of the supply to the positive, that is from right to left. As the armature accelerates, the counter EMF increases and opposes this flow of current. The counter EMF is just the voltage generated by the armature as it rotates in the magnetic field of the shunt. This is a circuit equivalent of a shunt motor as the armature turns. There is an armature resistance, which is in series with the generated voltage, we call counter EMF, CEMF. Note the polarity of the counter EMF. Its positive is on the same side as the positive of the supply. This is the same as connecting two supplies in parallel with a resistance in series with one of the supplies. <clears throat> if the counter EMF is less than the supplied voltage, current flows from the negative of the supply through the armature to the positive of the supply. When the M contacts open, current no longer flows through the armature and the armature coasts to a, to a stop. The energy of the armature is lost through friction of the bearings and the mechanical load applied to the motor and the movement of air caused by the armature. Note, because the shunt field is still energized, counter EMF is still generated in the armature and diminishes as the armature slows. Okay, let's look at the dynamic braking setup. A resistor is connected to the armature through a set of load contacts, shown here as B for braking relay. When the contacts close, the resistor will be across the armature. It is very important to note that the B contacts and the M contacts must be controlled so they cannot be closed at the same time. If they are, the braking resistor would receive supply voltage and current would continuously flow through this braking resistor causing it to heat. If it were to remain like this for a long period of time, the resistor would become very hot and possibly burn up. Now, with the braking resistor and the braking relay contact installed, when it comes time to stop the motor, the M contacts will open. The armature is still generating a voltage, which was counter EMF because it is spinning in the still energized shunt field. When the B contacts close, the resistor is now across the armature. The polarity of the generated voltage is shown there near A1 and A2, the armature is now a source of voltage and is feeding power to the braking resistor. The current now flows in the opposite direction, which causes a torque in the opposite direction that it's turning. This counter torque stops the motor quickly. Let's look at this again, but a little slower. Note the current before braking is from right to left. That is from the negative of the spy to the positive. When braking, the current now flows in the opposite direction because the armature is now a voltage supply. <clears throat> this reversal of current causes a counter torque. The current through the resistor causes it to heat up. In essence, it has turned the motor into a generator and dispersed the energy in the form of heat. Like the mechanical brakes of a car, the resistor converts the motion of the armature 
into heat energy, which is lost to the air. Dynamic braking has the advantage over mechanical brakes because there is very little moving parts to wear. Shown here is the circuit equivalent when the motor is braking. The armature has been disconnected from the supply and the now generated voltage, which was the counter EMF, now supplies current to the braking resistor. The resistor can get hot, therefore it is important to have a resistor with large enough power or wattage rating to withstand the energy it will dissipate. The resistance value is also important. If the resistor has too low a resistance, the amount of current demanded from the armature may be too great and cause the armature to overheat or burn up. If the resistance is too high, it will take longer to stop. The purpose of the braking resistor is to provide a path for current to flow from the negative side of the armature to the positive side. It restricts the flow of current from the armature so that it does not exceed the maximum allowable current of the armature and it dissipates the energy as heat. When it comes to braking capacity, the value of resistance is important. The value of resistance has an effect on braking. If the resistor has less resistance, more current will flow and the motor will stop quicker. If it has greater resistance, there will be less current and the motor will take longer to stop. Important notes. The shunt field must always be energized during braking to produce an armature voltage. The resistor must be high enough resistance value so that too much current does not flow through the armature and the resistor must have high enough power rating to handle the heat produced by braking. Thank you for watching this Sheridan College presentation on dynamic braking.